All right, don't really know what I'm getting myself into here. Wait, yes I do. I planned this video. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to learn the song that inspired me to pick up the guitar. If you've never heard this story, I'll keep it brief. I was a little boy, I heard Cliffs of Dover, and that blew my mind. And then I heard Eruption on Shuffle right after that. It was a recipe for guitar addiction, as I've said before. But really, Cliffs of Dover was the first note on a guitar that I heard that was like, well, I have to pick this up now. I'm not gonna try and learn the entire song because while I do see value in that, at the same time, I think I would rather spend that time working on my own guitar voice, but I feel like that intro of Cliffs of Dover honestly seemed impossible to me for many, many years. I didn't even know it was a guitar that I was hearing when I first heard that intro, but now I think I maybe stupidly have a chance to get close to it, so I'm gonna try and do that. And if nothing else, maybe you'll glean some insights on my learning process and it'll help you out in some way. Worst case scenario, I crash and burn and you can laugh at me. By the way, what I'm actually learning, I'm gonna try and learn everything up to the point where the sort of home riff comes in where he goes. I'm gonna learn everything up to that point. So I'm gonna try and play from memory just by feel. I've never really attempted to play this intro before, but I've heard it enough times that I feel like I can sort of mime and mimic my way through to kind of convey what it is, just so I can give you guys a foundation and starting point where I'm starting from. And then we can see how wrong I was playing it, how much I'm going to have to adjust. So let's see uh, what my interpretation from memory, just by hearing this song of the intro, of Cliffs of Dover is. I'm gonna play it kind of slow too, just so I can articulate the notes and not make a complete fool of myself right away. <laughs> Okay, that's about as much as I have. So that's my starting base. I'm certainly at the uh, ground floor and I'm going up to floor 1000, hopefully. So first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of put the song on and break it down note for note and maybe talk through what I'm thinking. Okay, so I think I had that one pretty close as far as the notes are concerned. <laughs> Right? Whoa! <laughs> happening. Close. Ugh, it happens so fast. All right, so this is like the, I've seen this on like Troy Grady's channel. He, this is like the five, the fives pentatonic stuff. Uh. See, okay. This part is gonna be tricky because he's clearly just playing uh, pentatonics here, but the key is to figure out where he's shifting, like when he shifts from this 12th fret down to like probably the fifth or seventh fret, because he'll eventually, he'll start here. Maybe he shifts at that point. 
ends up on that note. So I have to find a way to get from here down to here. Alright, I gotta figure out where that shift is. That is the main goal. So that's that's where the shift is, because he's not doing the five there. Maybe instead of starting here, he actually does just stay out down here on the seventh fret. Let's see if that's easier. Oh man, that is such a sick run. And it's not it's not terribly difficult as far as the uh, the dexterity you have to have. It's just a matter of the finesse, like the the obviously the speed, but. Just the, man, it's just right in the pocket, isn't it? By the way, I'm not using any delay. I feel like it's easy with songs like these to sort of mask your mistakes. Trying to have some discipline to, uh, to at least keep it clean in that regard. I am obviously have to use distortion to really get the mood right with this. All right, let's take it from the top. <laughs> Okay, so that's where I am right now. Now is where we get to the more finer details of really taking five notes at a time. That's sort of where, with learning something like this, it's incredibly fast. You can't really do more than four or five notes at a time if you really want to nail it. So this is where you're going to see some fast forwarding and some struggling. Later. There's an extra chromatic note. That's where I was getting thrown off with the fives. The timbre of his guitar tone, I think is insinuating that he's down in this area and not actually starting that run up here, I think. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for right now because I gotta go eat dinner. But I will be back tomorrow to pick up right where we left off. But for you, that's just gonna happen, right? All right, I'm back, it's the next day. Uh, I was getting a little warmed up going through the song again, kind of seeing what I had so far. And I came to a couple realizations about this initial phrase, which I'll get to, but I've determined that the most difficult passage of this intro is actually the descending part that happens right around here, the second to fifth fret, maybe the second to seventh fret, depending on how you play it. And that's exactly what I was trying to figure out. How the heck do you play this as fast as Eric Johnson? It has to be a perfect storm of notes and finger positions in order to pull this off or else it just isn't going to be up to speed. So I went to the internet and I tried to find some knowledgeable sources and I did that, but as it happens, last time I did this with Neon, the John Mayer song, people play these things in different ways and somehow pull them off. So I think based on how your bones and hands are built, uh, some people can do things that others can't. So I'm going to try and figure out exactly what the best way to play this kind of you know, right before it goes through. Well, we'll get there. But the point is, I found Chris Zupa first. He's my my longtime buddy, and I am going to show you sort of a snippet of what he went with for this descending pattern. Okay, so all together it goes. So he's playing it with this big reach here. Which is kind of difficult. So I don't know if that's gonna work for me. I mean, Chris's pinky is really insane and my pinky strength is maybe not up to snuff for that particular passage. And when I think pentatonics, I honestly think the strongest fingers are what really execute those passages most convincingly. 
Uh, but with that said, I think there could be some like three note per string pentatonics or some positional shifting. So the pinky is gonna be involved here. I don't know to that extreme. So then I went on to find this guitar lesson from Guitar Lesson 365 song. Uh, and this is, this was kind of a hard one because he never actually played the lick up to speed. It kind of just goes through the entire intro at quarter speed. So I'm not sure if this guy actually played what he demonstrated in a context of the actual intro to this Eric Johnson tune. So this is what he came up with and I'll, I'll put it on double speed to kind of show you. So he's in the third pentatonic position of it. Which feels a little bit more comfortable to me. Uh, so this is sort of a little chromatic thing that I discovered before. So that feels more comfortable to me. I think this is correct, uh, but he'll go on to sort of shift around positions, do some open string stuff that I don't know is right, at least for me. So then I was like, all right, I'm gonna stop messing around. Let's go to the guitar guru, Rick Graham, because he plays everything flawlessly, doesn't he? He tends to have insane technique though, so we'll see if his interpretation is more up my alley. Okay, <laughs> so he's insane. He is, it looks like playing three notes per string. I actually think it is two notes per string, but his very fluid technique sort of lends him to be ergonomically perfect. So it looks like he's in that third position of the pentatonic scale. So I think that is what I'm going to try is essentially stick to this third position for as long as I can and then shift down to the second position. So obviously the amount of notes and the syncopation is what I'll work on there, but really identifying the positional shifts is key to nailing this part because I tried to find the actual Eric Johnson version like of the man himself playing it and he just does crazy embellishments and it's not the exact recording. Uh, it's way better in my opinion, if it could get better. Okay, I'm gonna just try and get this whole first bit slowly and then speed it up. 20 minutes later. Twenty minutes later. for the sake of time on this video. I'm gonna put in a lot of work off camera. But the next phrase, I kind of have an idea of what this is because Eric Johnson loves to use spread voice triads and I sort of am just going up diatonically. This whole thing is in E minor, so out of the G major scale. And I'm just gonna try some diatonic spread voice triads. Sounds like the last one, right? So I think there's a couple notes in there that are maybe, there's like some ninths maybe or, or something happening with a couple of those, but I think those are the shapes that he's going through. It doesn't sound like it's on that E string, so maybe like. Really nice. 
would be an F sharp in the key of G, F sharp minor seven flat five, but it sounds like Where does he go after that? Blah, blah, blah. So he skips the E minor and goes straight to the... I think that's it. All right, so quick review. fun part. Alright, I have a, a bit of an idea how this goes, but... So I'm gonna try and... I know this is like the pedal tone. How he plays it that fast, holy crap. Twenty minutes later. That sounds like kind of G major mixed with pentatonic. There are those Eric Johnson five. Thousand years later. Okay, so I spent I would say a cumulative four hours on this and I learned a lot about myself as a guitar player and this is a message I want to impart that I think is important. It's not always unless your goal unless your goal is to sound exactly like somebody else, I think it's actually more fun to put your own style into a cover that you want to learn or a performance of a song that you like hearing. My favorite covers are the ones where you can tell it's not that guitar player covering the song. So I think that's how I ended up learning this Cliffs of Dover intro is it's definitely not Eric Johnson playing. Uh, there's only one Eric Johnson. I'm not trying to be him, but I am trying to put my own sort of swagger, if you will, into this. And I think what you'll see here at the end sort of testifies to that fact. And I also came across a little learning that I have never actually explained before in a video that I think is really helpful when you're learning licks uh, like these or a guitar solo maybe. If you know what key the guitar solo is in, you can practice it over backing tracks. So. I took the Cliffs of Dover intro and I just put on an E minor backing track. It was sort of like a Pink Floyd style vamp and it was actually really helpful for me to get a feel for the notes and not just play them like a recital or something, like I have to play this but there's not really any feeling. It helped me feel the notes. <laughs> That sounded pretty cool and you can sort of embellish and, and take away the rhythms like I do and you don't have to play it verbatim you just really the goal here is to feel the notes and get the finger positions under your fingers and play it like a musician not like a machine <laughs> So 
So that's the sort of stuff that I came up with, both paying homage to the thing. It's not completely out of left field as far as the way the notes are constructed. And it's the general gist of the Cliffs of Dover intro, what I came up with, but it's also my own kind of style. I think this was a really fun exercise and this intro is going to be part of my warm up routine and my sort of gauge of how warmed up I am depending on how well I can play this at any given moment. So I recommend not necessarily learning this song, but maybe there's a song out there that you just feel completely overwhelmed when you hear it. Like, I could never play that. It's exactly how I felt about this Cliffs of Dover intro. I'm not saying that I played it as well as Eric Johnson, but my goal wasn't really to do that. It was more about pushing myself to a limit. I've only spent like four or five hours on this, so maybe when I spend 40 hours on it, it will feel even more natural, but I think what came out of this uh, was pretty good, and I appreciate you for watching and tagging along this little journey with me, and let me know if there's another song out there that you'd like me to make a video like this about. I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, let's see what I came up with, shall we? Mm -hmm.